Good day, everyone. Neophyte DAG bringing you another message. And in this message, we're going to cover part five of timeline and etymology of the Bible. We're going to focus on King James and the way he broke away from the Roman Catholic interpretation of the Bible, which we covered in part three and part four. Let's talk about King James. In order to understand why he decided to write his own Bible, first you have to understand the person. He was a king of Scotland first, and then he became a king of England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and France. Spoiler alert, he was a black person. So I'm going to give you that heads up so you are forewarned before we jump into this message. This is King James and what he looks like. This is out of one of the books that he wrote. It's called The Works of the Most High and Mighty Prince James. By the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, Defender of the Faith, etc. And he published this book in 1616. It's his own book. And in his own book, he put an image of himself. And if you take a look at that image, you'll see from the complexion that it's a dark-skinned person. So this is his own book his own picture that he put in his own book. So if anyone tries to dispute the fact that King James is a dark-skinned complexion person, looking at the picture from his own book that he put of his own self, then there's something wrong with that person's vision. Another spoiler alert that I want to warn you about before we jump into it, I'm going to discuss where King James is from now in Scotland. And for anyone, once we get to the map, anyone who sees their family name or their surname on that map, it means that you are a direct descendant from Scotland, especially if you're a dark-skinned person, what we call in our time a so-called black person. So if you're dark-skinned, brown-skinned, ruddy-skinned, as what we call black in our modern time, and you see your family name on this map, be warned that you are a direct descendant of Scotland. And when I say you are a direct descendant of Scotland, I want to make it absolutely clear exactly what I mean. I do not mean that a fair-skinned, pale-skinned complexion person got a dark-skinned, brown-skinned, ruddy-skinned complexion woman impregnated, got her pregnant, and then gave her child the family name because the original name was with a fair skin, pale skin complexion family. That's not true. I also do not mean that your family line took the name from their slave master. That is absolutely not true. Those two explanations that were given to us growing up over the years in our history classes and our history lessons, and even within our religious studies, that is absolutely not true. That's a lie. So now that I've gotten the deceptive psychosis out of the way, I've cleared that out of the way, now I'm going to open it up to the truth. And the truth is, in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and all over Europe, majority of the people that were there were dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin complexion people. Focusing this on Scotland, where we're going to talk about King James. In Scotland, majority of the people, whether they're Highlanders or Lowlanders, were of dark skin complexion. They migrated from Europe into North America and the Caribbean. A lot of them came as indentured servants, seven-year indentured servants. Many of them came as political prisoners, the rebels, because they were giving problems in Europe. Some came as criminals, vagabonds, because they weren't part of the elite, the bourgeois structure. So they were spirited off, kidnapped, and taken into the Caribbean and North America. But that's the lineage of your family. Don't believe me? Let me prove it to you. Let's go to this book. It's called A Description of the Western Islands of Scotland, written by M. Martin. 
On page 239 on the right hand side of the screen, let's read together. They're talking about the inhabitants of that island and it's the island of Jura. Let's see what's on the island. The inhabitants are all Protestants, meaning they're not Catholic. They're against the Roman Catholic faith. Protestants are people that were protesting the majority Roman Catholic religion that was dominating Europe. Let's figure out what the people on the Jura part of the island look like. The natives here are black of complexion. Let me repeat that. The natives here are black of complexion. They speak the Irish language and wear plaid. Anywhere in your modern time where you see people wearing plaid, and they're mainly Caucasian people, fair skin, pale skin, complexion people, wearing plaid as their traditional outfit. No, it was not. It is part of your original custom that was assumed when you got swept out of Europe, Scotland in particular. They took the custom of wearing the plaid. So it's not, it's not a Caucasian tradition of wearing plaid. It's your tradition. Let's read again. They speak the Irish language. This is a black skin complexion person speaking the Irish language and wear the plaid. This is on the island of Jura. But does it stop there? No, it does not. Let's look at some other island portions of Scotland. Let's jump to page 224 and see what other complexion people were on the island of Scotland. The inhabitants of this isle are generally brown, some of black complexion. Another part of the island, another types of people, brown and black complexion. On 225, they speak Irish language, and some of them speak English. It's telling you who they are. Reading down further, the natives are all Protestant. Again, a lot of religious persecutions were going on in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. They did not want the Roman Catholic to come into their country. However, later on, when the Roman Catholic did get into these countries, they cleared out all the Protestants, ship them off to other parts of the new world, the new colony, North America and the Caribbean. MacDonald, that was a name that was celebrated in this part of the island. It's called Kilmore in the south. Want to go on? Let's move on some more. Because I have to prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that you were in these countries, Scotland in particular. We're going to focus on Scotland because that's where King James is from, showing you that dark-skinned people were there. King James being dark is no surprise to those who know this information. This is the Isle of Gigay. The inhabitants are all Protestant. They speak Irish. A few of them speak English. On that part of the aisle, brown in complexion. No secret, it's known. It's just another story was told to us. Send us off in another direction. If you want to find out more about how that direction was steered, there's another message that I had put out, which is titled, The White Race or White People Were Invented as a Social Status. Take a look at that. That will explain a lot more of what I'm talking about. Staying with Scotland, we're still not done yet. On the Isle of Colonsay, this is another part of Scotland. The inhabitants are black complexion. They speak only Irish. They are all Protestants. So all over Scotland, they're Protestants. They're brown skin, dark skin, complexion people. So that's why when I say spoiler alert, 
if you see your family name on the list, it's not because someone dropped it on you because they were your slave master or they impregnated a dark skin, brown skin complexion woman and then passed the name on through father lineage, not a chance. You got, you're getting the name because your family was actually in Scotland. Your family was actually in Ireland. Your family was actually in England. And when you came to the Caribbean and North America, you spoke Irish, you spoke the Scottish language, and you spoke English. That information will be coming out, so later on you'll find that information out, but I'm just bringing it to you at this particular point in time. This is the map of Scotland where King James and all the names that you see on the map, that's where these family names originated from. They didn't originate in any other part of the world. They originated in Scotland. Each family name had their share of the Scottish land. And if you look, you'll see all these names scattered across North America and the Caribbean. But this is where the family name started from. And these folks, again, they were dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin complexion people before the Caucasian, the Indo-Europeans came into Scotland. In the green section of the map, that's called the highland. In the lower section, the sort of light yellow, that's the lowland. So when you see the highlanders, movies, and so on, they're talking about the green section of the map. But the true highlanders were dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin, complexion people that were in Scotland at that time. So what I've done, I've circled where King James Stuart, that's his last name, that's where his family owned those section of Scotland. That's their land where they had their ownership. You'll sometimes see Stuart next to another name that's through marriage, through clan marriage. They'll combine resources and land to call themselves, for example, McLean Stewart, if they're close together, McNabb Stewart, they're close together, Robertson Stewart, they're close together. So when they make these alliances, they'll bring the clan names together to form whatever section of the map they want to carve out that this is the clan that owns that part of the land. In Scotland, the Stewart clan was given the kingship to rule over Scotland, and they ruled over Scotland for many, many years, all the way up until early 1700. That's where their rule ended. But they were ruling Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, all the way up until 1700. Going back to King James, he was born in Scotland in 1566 off the Stuart clan that I've circled for you on the map. King James Stuart, the sixth, that was his title in Scotland, was King of Scotland in 1567 before he became King James I of England, Ireland, Wales, and France in 1603. So when he was about one year old, he became the King of Scotland. And then after the death of Queen Elizabeth I, he succeeded to the throne of England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. That is the history of King James, his kingship when he was in Scotland and his kingship when he moved from Scotland to England. Good day, everyone. Neophyte DAG bringing you another message. And this message is titled King James the Sixth and First, Queen Mary, King Darnley, Queen Anne of Scotland, England, Ireland, France, Wales, Denmark, Norway were black. I'll take you further. I'll give you the other meaning of white that was being implied in the book, the memoir of the court of King James. White a person of any skin complexion that is born of a direct European ancestry. And that was the 
rule and the law that was in place between 1676 and 1924. White race or white people entered the European language in the 17th century. That's during the years 1600, 1601 to 1699. In the European colonies, meaning the colonies that are in the New World, North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean, these societies did not have any notion of a white race. It came and was invented during the 1676, lasted until 1924. It changed after 1924, but that's when it came up, this term, white as a complexion. Now, European dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin, fair skin, light skin, and pale skin were all classified as white social status. That's what it was between that time of our history. It was a social status. In 1924, it changed to a complexion. But all these people, dark, Brown skin, ruddy skin, fair skin, light, and pale skin were all classified as white. This is a proof that I'm going to present to you to show you that. You go back to the United States Declaration of Intention. This is an immigration document. I'll bring you to description is, on this form, white, complexion, ruddy. That's the document on the left-hand side, and the document on the right-hand side, description color white, complexion dark. That's telling you this is a white classification, but the complexion is ruddy and the complexion is dark. Again, it's a social status white. The complexion doesn't have anything to do with the white at that particular point in time. This custom form lasted up until the year 1924, and it's a document from the United States of America, the Department of Labor, which controlled the immigration and the naturalization at that time. Give you more example, more of the same form. Description is color, white, complexion, dark. Same on the right-hand side, description, white, color, fair. So it's telling you all these different complexion type people were white. And if you look on the document on the right-hand side, the person was born in Scotland. The document on the left, the person was born in Scotland as well. And let's go back here. The person was born in England. And the document on the right, the person was born in Ireland. So people from all these countries with these different complexion type were classified as white. Even the fair-skinned people of our time now, which we call the only whites now, they weren't the only whites at that time. Dark skin, ruddy skin people were also white before it changed. It changed in 1924, the Racial Integrity Act, and it, that act was amended in 1930, which changed the white classification now to, if you are a 100% Caucasian blood, that's the only way you can continue to be classified as white. If you have less than 100% Caucasian blood, you became black. So the dark skin, ruddy skin, brown skin people were pushed out of the white classification and they were moved into the black classification by default. And then in 1930, the rule changed to say, if you are dark skin, brown skin, or ruddy skin, the belief is that you're from Africa, and therefore you become black in categorization. That changed the rule. So going back to King James, the white classification 
means that he was of that white status, that white social class, and he was a ruddy complexion person. That's why I had to walk you through this. Let's continue with the Racial Integrity Act because I have to drive this one home to get rid of all the mental psychosis that's been placed around color, white and black. Racial Integrity Act, a white person who could trace their bloodline as a Caucasian, 100% pure Caucasian, was able to keep that categorization of being white, that status of being white. And if you could not prove that you're pure blood, then you were moved out into the category that's called colored. That category in 1930 was changed to black because the colored were now believed to be of African ancestry, even though you were not. You are from Europe. But because now everyone who's dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin is believed to be from Africa, you were put into that default category as black. But it doesn't change a fact as to where you were from, what language you spoke, and what tribe you belong to. Now going back to Testament of Asher 7 verse 6, these warnings were given to the children of Israel that these things are going to happen. You will not know what language you spoke, what tribe you belong to, and what country, what land you came from because of this 1924 and 1930 rule which put you and defaulted you into African ancestry, creating the term African American. You are not African American. You are from Europe first, and you were brought into America. You can figure out who you are from there. I won't put you into any category. Brings us back to King James, the original Jacobite. This is a picture of King James that's housed in the National Portrait Gallery of the United Kingdom. Take a look at King James. Undisputed, a black person in our modern day definition of what a black person is. Portrait of him that was available in 1608. Black person, and he regarded himself as a Jacobite. You see Jacobus in the description around the picture of King James. Which brings us to Jacobites. If you're not convinced that King James and all the people that were in Scotland who associated themselves as with King James were black in our modern day term, and they were dark skin, ruddy skin, brown skin people, we're gonna go to the Jacobites because King James is the original Jacobites. Everyone else who followed King James and what he believed in were regarded as Jacobites. The Jacobites were exiled. Some of them in the year 1745 were exiled to Antigua and Martinique in the Caribbean as political prisoners. Their ideas became too radical for the United Kingdom at that time, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and they were rounded up, arrested, tried, and became political prisoners and exiled to the Caribbean and North America. These Jacobites are in North America at this time. Their descendants are here in America, and I'll prove that to you. We go to this book, Jacobite Gleanings, from the state manuscript. This is from the books, the records that were being kept by the legal, the political rulers of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Everything the crown did, it had to document it and kept record of it. And this is the transportation record of 150 rebel prisoners that were shipped from Liverpool in England to Antigua, 
the Leeward Islands, Antigua is in the Leeward Islands, and Martinico, the Martinique Island. They were carried through Martinique. Their ultimate destination is Antigua. And we're going to look at the remarks column. These are all the names of the people that were shipped. I gave you the entire 150 names, and I want you to pay close attention to the remarks column. Robert Adam, brown, complexion, smooth-faced. <laughs> William Bell, black, curl hair, strong made. Douglas Campbell, brown, complexion. Alex Catanoc, black, ruddy. King James is ruddy, black and ruddy. It's the same complexion as King James. Douglas Campbell, brown, complexion. All these people, just keep reading the remarks column. You see all these people, brown, black, ruddy complexion. And it goes all the way through the 150 prisoner list. And I want to draw your attention if you might say, well, they were fair skin and pale skin. And these descriptions are not accurate. Let's jump to prisoner 62, John Crookshanks, fair complexion. Let's jump to 63. Duncan McLeod, pale complexion. So wherever possible, where there were pale complexion, they'll list that. But wherever there were dark complexion, 71. Joseph Brown, dark complexion. It's telling you we're identified what the complexion is. These 99% of the prisoners were dark skin, brown skin. And I'll even jump you to prisoner 40, James Nielsen, black, swarthy. Swarthy means dark skin complexion. They're telling you this man is black, swarthy. So it's telling you where it is, undisputable. And these are all Jacobite prisoners. The book says so. I didn't make this thing up. Short sketches of the Jacobites which King James is the original Jacobite, all dark-skinned people. We'll go to prisoner 44, John Stewart. That's off the King James line. Wherever you see Stewart, it's from the Stewart clan. Brown complexion and ruddy as well. Brown ruddy. That's what this is telling you, undisputable. 52, John Stewart, another Stewart from the Stewart clan. Brown, swarthy complexion. So the Stuart line, or swarthy. If you trace these names to the clans of Scotland, you'll see they're all dark-skinned people, which will support the statement I made in the beginning that the clans of Scotland were dark-skinned, brown-skinned, ruddy-skinned people, not the fair-skinned, pale-skinned people that you're led to believe now in your modern washed over history that the ungodly had changed the judges to make them the complexion of the ungodlies. The rest of the list, you go through it, you'll see dark complexion, brown complexion, swarthy complexion, you'll see a few fair complexion, pale complexion, but the overall theme of this they are 99% dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin, swarthy skin, complexion people that were shipped from Scotland to the Caribbean, Antigua, and Martinique, which is in the description of the 135 men, 18 held, from Perthshire, Scotland, 20 from Iverness, Scotland, 25 from Aberdeen, Scotland, and 19 from England, and one from Ireland. Undisputed, that's what it's telling you. And it even break out Edinburgh writer George Hume, age 30, marked as a black man whose color was no doubt suited for the West Indies. They all went to Antigua. Some of them went to Martinique. Some were now reclaimed from Martinique and brought into 
and Tiga. Jacobites, dark skin people from the lineage from the following of King James, the sixth and the first of Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, and France. This brings us back to the map of Scotland. And as you can see, all the names on the map, these are surnames, family names. Many of these names are on the list we just went through. But all these family names are names of dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin complexion people that occupied Scotland at that time. They owned these land spaces and they were all moved out into North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. If you look in these countries, you'll see these names spread out all over with dark skin folks. This is where they are from. I've proven that in other videos that there are dark skinned people in Scotland. And just to name that list, it's a one indication as to where you can go with it to do your own research.